Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson of Jesus in the Answer. The new Jita TV network is now going around the world 24 hours a day. And one of the first preachers that I, for me to have on this new network is Prophet Isaiah Kelly. You know, Dr. Kelly, you are just amazing. I mean, the Lord just uses you. Whatever you're doing, don't mess it up. Stay holy. Stay sanctified, yes, sir. because we always know that God's going to send a word when you come. So tell them about the revival. We have a revival. Tonight is the first night, yes. and I'm going to put this on the network tonight before I leave my office. And so tell us about what we can expect over the next two days. Look, you guys need to meet me here in this revival. Tonight was the first night. We will be here tomorrow night and Friday night, uh, nightly at 7 p.m. So you need to meet me here. Look. God is speaking to the, the heart and the soul of the believer prophetically and atmospherically. He is destroying yokes. He's changing minds. He's renewing lives. This is not anything that is usual. This is an unusual move of God. Meet the prophet here tomorrow and Friday night. All right. Now, remember, that's tomorrow, uh, Thursday, and Friday night. Or you might be watching this on Thursday. Or you might be watching Thursday in the afternoon. You might be, you might see this promo Friday. If it's if you're watching it Thursday tonight at 7:30. If you're watching it Friday tonight at 7:30. If you're watching it tonight tomorrow night at 7:30. Just make it to Jesus is the Answer Church, 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Cross Street is Lomita Avenue in Harbor City. Uh, doctor, just thank you so much. You preach you tonight, you and we're going to share that with our TV audience tonight. You are anointed. And stay humble, stay anointed, and let the Lord use you. So we're looking for a great time. Yes, so sir. remember, that's Thursday night, Friday night at 7.30. And we're going to look for a good time in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's the answer? Jesus is the answer. I'm not looking for counterfeit worshipers. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I made you pastor, but your name is Israel. Yeah. Yeah. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. Yes, You're wondering why you're just not feeling God like you used to. is because God has removed Himself from the scene and now He's looking for people. Yes. Come on, yes. So we're looking for God and God is looking for us. Yes. God is tired of us singing the same song. God says, write me a new song in worship. Yes. We've experienced too much, Pastor Kennedy, not to have the ability to write God a song. Sometimes your song ain't got a rhyme. You just got to talk to the Lord. There's a Hebrew word by the name of Massah, M-A-S-S-A, and that word simply means to prophesy in music. Yes. Oh, here. Or in other words, you can change your situation if you say the right things while yes. worshiping God in your soul. Right. Right. He says, God is seeking such to worship him. For God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God says, tell my people that are coming tonight that I'm getting ready to challenge them. And if they dare to worship me, God says, I shall change some things in the next 72 hours. Look at your neighbor one more time and just say, from now to December, you're not going to recognize who I am. Johnson of Jesus in the Answer, the new Jita TV network is now going around the world 24 hours a day and one of the first preachers that I, for me to have on this new network is prophet Isaiah Kelly you know dr. Kelly you are just amazing I mean the Lord just uses you whatever you're doing don't mess it up stay holy stay sanctified yes, sir. because we always know that God's gonna send a word when you come so tell them about the revival we have a revival tonight is the first night yes. and I'm gonna put this on the network tonight before I leave my office and so tell us about what we can expect over the next two days. Look, you guys need to meet me here in this revival. Tonight was the first night. We will be here tomorrow night and Friday night, uh, nightly at 7 p.m. So you need to meet me here. Look, God is speaking to the, the heart and the soul of the believer 
prophetically and atmospherically he is destroying yokes he's changing minds he's renewing lives this is not anything that is usual this is an unusual move of god meet the prophet here tomorrow and friday night all right now remember that's tomorrow uh thursday and friday night or you might be watching this on thursday or you might be watching thursday in the afternoon you might be you might see this promo friday if it's if you're watching it thursday tonight at 7 30. if you're watching it friday tonight at 7 30. If you're watching it tonight, tomorrow night at 7.30, just make it to Jesus is the Answer Church, 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Cross Street is Lomita Avenue in Harbor City. Uh, doctor, just thank you so much. You preach you tonight, you and we're going to share that with our TV audience tonight. You are anointed, and stay humble, stay anointed, and let the Lord use you. So we're looking for a great time. Yes, so sir. remember, that's... Thursday night, Friday night at 7.30, and we're going to look for a good time in the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's the answer? Jesus is the answer. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I have with me the renowned prophet Isaiah Kelly. And right now, I guess you're from Lancaster. That's it. Did you move back out to California? I am here now. So in you're in California. Lancaster. Okay, so you're in Lancaster, By California. By way of Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> By way of Baltimore, Maryland. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of conversations, two things I want to talk to you about right now. I kind of want to get your young perspective from it. I want you to be honest. I want you to be open. First thing, your feeling on the passing of gay marriage. I am totally disagree. Um, I don't agree with it at all. Explain. Oh, simply because the Bible says it is wrong. Um, mm -hmm. I believe that there are three different types of sins. I believe there are sins that are not under death, such as like gluttony. Mm -hmm. I believe there are sins that are under death, the Ten Commandments, and I believe that there are abominations. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really blew my mind that there were even some pastors who were posting pictures congratulating other spiritual leaders on their marriage to same-sex marriages. Spiritual and leaders? Spiritual leaders Whoa. via Facebook. And I so thought I was up to do. I don't believe that it should be allowed, period. Okay. So how, how should the church... Okay, you're going to pastor, right? Hopefully not. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Hopefully not. If you pastor a church, you open up the doors of your church, and a gay couple says, I want to get married. What do you do? Um, well, because we are a Christian church, then I would easily, there's still people. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is a belief that I do have. There's still people. We can't badger them. We just right. preach against the spirit that's in them. Right. And so I would easily let them know that it is against the belief of this church to right. allow you to be one right. in unity here. Right, right. Okay. So you have millions of uh, people who are, are gay, who love the same sex. They're watching all over the world right now. We're not here to offend them. We're here to pray for them. We're here to hope that God will save them. But what would you say to them? Um, I would say that I don't, and, and excuse me if this is a little wrong, but I don't believe that you're really in love. And I believe that you need to really uh, psychologically uh, evaluate yourself to make sure that you're not in a false preconceived image of what you think love is. Because it's clear and up to date that the Bible says God is love. And if God is love, then how can anything outside of him make you really be in love? And so therefore, I believe that you're in strong infatuation with yourself. Because the Bible says in the last few days, men will become lovers of themselves, not homosexual-wise, but loving who you are. Mm -hmm. And I believe that you love yourself so much that you're doing with whatever will make you happy at that moment and blaming it on love. And so I would ask you to please reevaluate yourself to make sure that something along the line did not take place to cause you to be food in your own mentality. My next question is why is it rampant in the church? Way before all of this issue came up, it was rampant in the choirs, it was rampant in especially the holiness church. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think that is? I believe that's, that's so because we allow anything to go on. Right. Um, we're trying to keep our young people, trying to keep our membership sold to a, a standard because of offering that we're allowing any and everything to go in the church. And when I say any and everything, I don't just mean uh, whoever want to preach, get to mm -hmm. preach. Mm -hmm. I mean, even down to, well, we're going to let our young people gospel rap. Right. Well, when did somebody get filled with the Holy Ghost gospel rap? Right. When did they get saved? No, they didn't get saved. They're only saved because we're allowing them to do what they want to do in the church. Right. Um, secular praise dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, so that spirit erupts another spirit, and by you gospel rapping, right. I'm attracted to what I see. Right. By you dancing half naked, I'm now attracted to what I see, regardless of any sex. Right. Um, 
hormone hormonal things or hormones are in the mind. Right, right. And so it's not necessarily that I'm liking what I see, but I'm mm -hmm. attracted to what it is that I envision. Right, right, right. So the Bible says that they used to be called the Sodomites yes. back in the day, and it was the Edomites yes. uh, back in the Bible times. And I studied right before the flood. And the Bible says they did whatever came to their imagination. Mm -hmm. Are we at that same point now? Yes, we are. And whatever, what's our next step? Whatever, destruction. Um, the next step, first off, the earth is already destructing itself. Mm -hmm. And so the next step after this is the coming of Christ. Right. And um, we, we are at that point because whatever is in the mind or the imagination of man is being produced. And the bad part about it now, Bishop, mm -hmm. is that it's being produced on film. Wow. And so right. there was a time where homosexuals would keep quiet. Right. Well, now we're being homosexual and we're uploading it to Facebook right. and tagging people in it wow. <laughs> so they can see it. Wow. And so now it's whatever's in your imagination that you want to do or that you can dream of. And mm -hmm. I don't mind is the enemy's territory. Right, right, right. And so right. if you land in the bed of your idol and something comes to your mind, eventually it's going to awaken your hormones, you're going right. to produce it, and right. now you want everybody to know what it is. Right. And so the next step after the step that we are in right now is becoming a Christ. We can't get any worse. Right. Why do you think that the homosexuals are so violent or so adamant to prove their point? Well, because love is in the mind. Right. And so how can I tell you that God did not tell you to do what you said God told right. you to do? Right. The Bible clearly says that God is a spirit. Right. And so if God is a spirit, then I can't go to him and say, God, did you tell Bishop that it was okay to right. do that? Right, right, right. And so it's the, the, the violence comes in where they know that it's wrong. Right. And they cannot convince the world that it is right. Right, right. And so by doing that, um, it's kind of like... Kind of like two kids. Right. When two kids are arguing and one know that it, that they're right, eventually the person that's right is going to shut up because right. regardless of what you say, I know what I what I what I said is right. Yeah. But the one that is wrong will keep arguing. Consider the story of the two harlots. Mm -hmm. The two the harlots baby. produced yeah. the baby, right. and the ones who baby that it was eventually said, "Hey, whatever, you right. keep it. Right. I know that it's mine." Right. Right. The right. one who knew that the baby was not hers wanted to kill it. Wanted kept kill arguing. It. Right. Come on, King. Right. Right. Similar right. to that story. They right. know what they're doing is wrong. Right, right, right. Amen. So I'm just, thank you for your views on that. We're going to come back later on because I have something else we want to talk about uh, in the headlines and the news. It's all over the place. And I just, because you're young. I'm young. Yes, I'm 50 sir. years young. <laughs> I'll be 50 years old. That's good stuff. But uh, I'm young at heart. I keep up with the young people. But I'd like to hear it from a young person's perspective who's saved. I, know, yes. I don't want to hear it from the worldly perspective because I know what they're going to say. Yes. But I want to hear it from your perspective being saved. We'll be right back. We just there's something going on in the news right now. It might be over with. But your thoughts on the Zimmerman trial and the murder of Trayvon Martin? Oh my God, um, Zimmerman is definitely guilty, 100% guilty. Um, I reposted a video the other day, and it was a man who physically explained everything that Zimmerman said, and he gave three other options as to why that could have possibly been false or or true. And so it's just amazing. You say that this young man was wrestling you, but he was found shot dead on his stomach. If he's bashing your head in and you pull out a gun and you shoot him, he should have fallen directly on you. Right. And there should be some blood or DNA right. on you and the weapon. Right. But there was no trace of anything. Right. Right. You know that you had the gun. Right. Trayvon didn't know. Right. So then why would you engage him without pulling your weapon or right. allow him to get so close to you right. before you pull your weapon that you tussle with him? Right. 100% false. So we know it's false. I know it's false. That's our opinion. How do you think the system got away with that? How do you think they made this happen with this jury? Well, because um, the system is already corrupted. Mm -hmm. um, them that don't believe in God is corrupted already. Mm -hmm. And so um, I believe that there are two reasons. One, it could have been 
he has people in his family lineage that are of high authority. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is um, the nation is coming to an end. Bishop. Right. It's time for God to come back. Right. And so while we're looking for justice, God is saying, I'm getting ready to prepare my people to exit. Right. 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 And so <laughs> I believe that everything that's happening is in God's divine plan. Right. Right. And the devil does not have the ability to kill us. Right. Right. He does have the ability to make us kill ourselves. Exactly. And so us black people, as people of, of African descent, mm -hmm. we're so angry now right. that we're acting plum fools in right. the middle of society. And what right. is that doing? That's murdering ourselves. That's we right. are our destruction. That's right. Not the man. Right. <laughs> so my thoughts, uh, one of the jurors came forward and did an interview. And in the juror's interview, she broke down in tears. And she cried at the fact that Trayvon Martin was dead, number one. Number two, she made the statement that he should have never got out of the car. So these are the statements of the, these are statements of fact. Yes. So this juror made these statements of fact, yet they let him go free. Yes. And all the statements that this juror is making publicly is that this man was guilty. But because of corruption, this this man has walked. So what do you think he's gonna face now? Um, what is he going to face? He's going to face a life of the torment. Right. Period. Uh, both physically and spiritually, because God is not going to let him go free in the mind. Right. And then second of all, he's going to always feel as though there's somebody out there who's right. trying to take him out. Right. But um, regardless of, of the emotionalism of the juror, um, you, you're going to get as emotional as you want to get when you're on TV. Right. But what, it, what you did in the courtroom is what mattered. My mom used to always tell me, mm -hmm. you can get as enthusiastic as you want to get after mm -hmm. the basketball game. Right. But it's what you do on the court that's going to make the difference. Right. So if you're asleep on the court but enthusiastic at home, what does what that, you know, benefit you? Mm -hmm. And so I believe that everybody knows how to be a great actor. Right, right. So doesn't this prove that maybe our kids are in danger? A hundred percent. Our children are. Our children are an endangered species yes. that could be killed. And then, you know, right before this thing with Zimmerman, a woman shot up in the air. Afro-American woman. 20 years. Shot up in the air and got 20 years. Yes. And it's the same thing. Yes. Very, very different. Body. Very different because mm -hmm. he, he actually should have been convicted up. Right. He killed somebody. Right. You know? So, I want you to do me a favor. There are millions of parents millions of teenagers watching this broadcast right now. Can you say a special prayer right in that camera for America and for these young people and their families? Definitely. Father, in Jesus' name, God, only you know the, the solution. God, only you know the answer. You understand the fear. You understand the frustration and the aggravation. And God, you even understand the intimidation. And so, God, we're asking now that you dispatch your angels to the believers and the unbelievers and cover their children so that there would not be another CNN news broadcast, God, about something that is occurring in our society. And, God, you said that the people of God had to make a standard. And we're putting up the standard of prayer. And we believe that they are covered even now, yes, nationally and internationally, in yes, Jesus' name. Jesus. And we thank you in advance. Yes, Amen. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson and Prophet Isaiah Kelly. Bless you. Amen. And we're going to share the messages that he's been preaching with us for the last, for three days. And you're going to enjoy this. All right. God bless you. And make leave a comment. Hit the like button. And let's hear your comments on what we've just talked about. All right. God bless.